Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 268, The Sealing of the 144,000, Part 4. The podcast objectives are analyze how the window of opportunity in this season is closing, analyze the urgency of the hour we are living in, Analyze the connection between perfection and the seal of Elohim. Reveal why we must always do those things that please the Father. Analyze the importance of honesty and blamelessness. And provide an update on the next phase in this end time series. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. The window is closing. Now, we concluded the most recent podcast by revealing the prominent role of surrender in the lives of the true disciples of Yahushua Messiah. Explicitly, the 144,000 who are sealed in Revelation 7. Remember, these 144,000 are the spiritual standard. They are the prototype, the benchmark for all who will obtain the seal in these last days. And thus, we must all strive to be in that number or else in that spiritual model. This speaks to the role of surrender in our lives. To it, our willingness to walk in the ways of surrender ensures us of a crucial reality. And I will offer it as an early entrance point in this lesson. It is impossible to follow Yahushua Messiah wherever he leads us if we are not predisposed to surrender. Now, the key word here is predisposed. In effect, surrender is not an isolated event for the true disciples of Yahushua Messiah. Like all the pillars of our beliefs, surrender is a lifestyle. It's something we do and are prepared to do every day. In many ways, and like many spiritual degrees, surrender is an evolution of faith. As a matter of fact, surrender is the highest degree of faith. In effect, the act of surrender is the most powerful demonstration of faith any man or woman can make. It goes without saying, that most of us within the extended nation of Israel understand the role that faith plays in our spiritual lives. As the saying goes, we've come this far by faith. However, I am not sure if we have the same understanding and or appreciation of the role of faith in our survival in these last days. And thus, I will address it with the following interest point. I ask you to consider it faithfully. Our journey through the seven seasons in these last days represents the most prominent, powerful, and painstaking faith walk in the history of our world. No doubt, the magnitude of this statement and this journey rests on the simple fact 
that more people will die during these last days than any other time in the history of our world. That's the first thing you must consider. Next, you must appreciate the fact that there is only a small window of opportunity to be saved in this present season, and that window is closing fast. Not only this, but there is another critical matter you must appreciate about this limited offer of salvation in these last days. And as it is one of the most important points I will make in this series, I ask you to bookmark it and consider it every day. The day of salvation for many will end prior to the ceiling of these set apart ones. This is due to the spiritual laws upon increase, which reveal that there are appointed times we must succeed to achieve any spiritual goal. Here lies a problem. Vis-a-vis, -vis, many have already missed their appointed times, and many more will miss them in the upcoming days, weeks, and months. I am not inclined to say years. And thus, as they have treated Elohim and his messengers in kind, these will not be taken. On the rather, while the chosen elect are taken and guarded in the ensuing seasons, these will all be left behind. They were drifting farther away. Now, I will illustrate this scenario using the graphic below. Very needless to say, this is a very high-level timeline of the ceiling of these set-apart ones, which I have labeled as the Day of Salvation. In doing so, you should understand that day in this context is non-literal. It is neither a 24-hour period nor a creative day. The Day of Salvation is simply a scriptural model that suggests the time is limited, and no one should mess around. You see this clearly, because near the end of the season, there is a point of no return. This is the juncture where the window of opportunity to be saved will close for those who are not far enough along in their attainment of the seal of Elohim. Here lies the inflection. Vis a vis, the point of no return in this season will occur well before this season ends. And we know this season is soon to end. Now, look, this brings us to another key point of interest that I trust you will never forget and that you never take lightly going forward. Due to the lateness of the hour, there are many people in our world who have no potential of ever obtaining the seal of Elohim. And some of them may be in our assemblies, and some of them may be our family and our friends. This speaks to a key nature of the point of no return in this season. Vis-a-vis, -vis, it is a universal model, i.e., it represents the final cutoff for everyone in our world. And yet, many will experience a cutting off prior to this point of no return. Here again, it is because they did not make enough progress towards obtaining the seal in the leading frames of this season. And while many thought they were getting closer to the goal, the truth is, they were drifting farther away. Progression and regression. Now, this is why I have consistently referenced the models of regression and progression, even before we began this end time series. 
It is for the following reason, which I will offer as an interest point. It takes much more effort, spiritually and physically, to make progress than it does to experience regression. Not only this, but the progress we attempt to make upon the incursion of any manner of regression will always be more difficult, while our prospects of success will have decreased exponentially. Not only this, but the spiritual output that resulted in progress today is not equal to the spiritual output required for you to make progress tomorrow. In effect, you must increase your spiritual output on a consistent basis if you are to experience spiritual growth. As the saying goes, what got you here won't get you there. And accepting this truth will take you anywhere. No doubt, this is not an uncomplicated matter. And thus, we will analyze some of the more prominent points on this crucial topic to aid you as you labor to make your calling and your election sure. Let's start at the beginning. To wit, we are all in one of two spiritual states always, progression or regression. Quite simply, anyone who is not making spiritual progress is in spiritual regression. This brings us to a fundamental question. What does spiritual progression look like? Or allow me to ask the question this way. How do we know we are making spiritual progress? The answer, transformation, i.e., you are looking more like Yahushua Messiah every day. This shouldn't be too hard to understand, seeing as we have already established the basis for discipleship. Vis-a-vis, -vis, as disciples, we are to be as our master. And since our master is the perfect man, we are being assimilated into his model of perfection. Now, this brings us to the next question. How do we know we are progressing towards our master's model of perfection? The answer, there are many ways you can measure the transformation process. To our good fortune, Yahushua Messiah has provided me with a tried and true model of perfection. And should you follow it, you will not only achieve perfection, but you will also obtain the seal of Elohim. I trust I have gotten your attention with this pivotal statement, and I trust you were able to pick up on a key connection between perfection and the seal of Elohim. If not, consider the following interest point carefully, and you will see. Those who will obtain the seal of Elohim in this season will have achieved a fundamental degree of perfection with specific regards to the Father's will. Always do what pleases him. Now, this shouldn't be too hard to understand, especially when you consider the nature of the 144,000. Remember, these men are the standard for all who will obtain the seal of Elohim. And what do we know about them? Revelation 14, 4 through 5 reads, They are those who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are those following the Lamb wherever he leads them on. They were redeemed from among men, being firstfruits to Elohim and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no falsehood, for they are blameless before the throne of Elohim. 
from this passage, we understand four things concerning the 144,000. One, they are not the five. Two, they follow the lamb wherever he leads them. Three, there is no falsehood in their mouth. And four, they are blameless. My dear friends, I submit to you that the sum of these four spiritual attributes is the essence of perfection. First and foremost, the 144,000 are undefiled. That simply means they are without sin, for sin is the source of all that defiles. We discussed this matter in a prior podcast, revealing that there are three steps involved in this process. One, you must overcome your sinful nature. Two, you must overcome your flesh. And three, you must mortify the deeds of your flesh. As these three milestones are required for us to exist in an undefiled state, they are also required for us to obtain the seal of Elohim. And so, if you're making a list, make sure you put these three milestones at the top. Next, we find that the 144,000 are following the Lamb wherever He leads them on. To be clear, the Lamb in this passage is Yahushua Messiah, an association that is referenced 26 times in the book of Revelation alone. Now, this brings us to the question of the hour. Where is Yahushua Messiah leading us? The answer, he is leading us down the path of perfection. Again, with specific regards to the Father's will. I continue to make specific reference to the Father's will because it is the baseline of our perfection. It is the perfection criteria. This is important to note for the following reason, which I will offer as an interest point. Without a predefined criteria for perfection, many will misconstrue the spiritual model of perfection, making it something it is not, and more often than not, making it harder than what it is and what it was always meant to be. That said, the spiritual model of perfection is quite simply our proficiency in our execution of the Father's will, which the scriptures refer to as doing the word. Therefore, don't let the enemy confuse you and don't let him deceive you. To be perfect is to be as our master who always succeeded in his execution of the will of the Father. It is nothing more and it is nothing less. John 8, 29 reads, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. Now, if we, like Yahushua Messiah, can obtain this testimony, then we can rest assured. The Father will not leave us alone in this hour of temptation and great distress that has come upon all the earth. For we, like Yahushua, always do those things that please him. To be honest and blameless. Now, moving on, we find that the 144,000 had no falsehood in their mouths, i.e., they were not simply averse to telling lies. These men told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the fear of Yahuwah Elohim. They are honest men and not to a fault, 
but unto the salvation of their souls. And if you would receive it, I would have you know that dishonesty is the number one deterrent to spiritual progress within the extended nation. Add it to your list. Last, but certainly not least, John tells us that the 144,000 are blameless. This is, no doubt, the most crucial connection between the 144,000 and the spiritual model of perfection. For to be blameless is the essence of perfection. Now, by definition, to be blameless is to be without blemish or spot, faultless, unblameable. My dear friends, this is not only a spiritual feature prescribed to the 144,000, it is also a spiritual attribute of the renewed nation of Israel. That is, the invisible assembly of Yahushua Messiah vis-a-vis -vis the spiritual bride. Ephesians 5, 25-27 reads, Husbands, love your wives, as Messiah also did love the assembly and gave himself for it, in order to set it apart and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, in order to present it to himself a splendid assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any of this sort, but that it might be set apart and blameless. Now, this passage confirms the spiritual status of blamelessness. Thus, we conclude it is not enough to simply be undefiled and honest in all our doings. As the scriptures teach, we must be above reproach. We must not let our good be evil spoken of. My dear friends, we must abstain from every appearance of evil. And this we will do as we become masters of the Father's will and surrender ourselves to following Yahushua Messiah wherever he leads us. Ready to obtain the seal. Now, at a very high level, these four points are the four prerequisites to obtaining the seal of Elohim. I will restate them for your edification. One, they are not defiled. Two, they follow the lamb wherever he leads them. Three, there is no falsehood in their mouths. And four, they are blameless. Notwithstanding, the actionable steps lie in the details. That is to say, these four points represent the vision. They are the goal. They are the end result of all who will obtain the seal of Elohim. And yet, to achieve this vision and to succeed this goal, you must understand the steps involved. And you must endure the process of transformation required to elevate you into the spiritual company of the 144,000. For that reason, at the conclusion of the space, dedicated to analyzing the second season in these last days, we are not going directly into the third season, i.e., we are not going to transition from the sealing of the set-apart ones to the sifting of the nations. Do not worry. We will get to the sifting in due time. However, the Father has led me to insert an impromptu phase between season two and season three. This phase will be dedicated to ensuring every member of this ministry obtains the seal of Elohim before the current season ends. I will share more about this phase in the upcoming weeks. Until then, 
I advise everyone to get ready for a powerful move of the spirit, for there are countless benefits and amazing experiences you will receive as you are transformed and you are made ready to obtain the seal of Elohim. Amen. Now, here is the final word. Your window of opportunity is closing swiftly. So, whatever you do, do it quickly. As I said before, the day of salvation for many has come and gone. And thus, they are not our audience. Yahuwah has not called me to speak to them. They don't have enough runway to get their planes in the air. They will ne'er be sealed nor saved. However, there are many who are yet in play. The day of salvation for you is still here. The window is open. Opportunity does yet knock. And yet, the day of Yahuwah draws near. Therefore, he is calling you to take advantage of this opening and to ensure you have taken each step required to obtain the seal. For we all know what is coming. The worst of times is upon us and things are about to get very real. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, in Times 268, The Sealing of the 144,000, Part 4. And the next podcast is entitled, in Times 270, A Summary of the People and Places of the Sealing, Part 1. I will post this podcast on Monday, April 15th, 2024. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the spirit of Elohim, continue to watch, continue to pray, continue in fasting, and most of all, continue to be focused, for the end is coming, the end is near.